So, really quick, at some point, make sure you check out my episode on this brand new commander that can copy your legendary dragons. That's right, this is pretty absurd. And speaking of copying, don't leave just yet because on this episode, I'm going to be talking about a brand new card that can triple anything. So, to find out what exactly this card does, well, let's jump into it. So, Tomb of Horrors Adventurer is a 4-4 Elf Monk that costs 5 in a blue, and it says, when it enters the battlefield, you take the initiative. Now, initiative is kind of like a combination of Monarch and a very specific new dungeon called Undercity. And actually, really quick, uh, check out that episode on what the blazes is initiative. Yeah, that, that's the title of it. <laughs> Anyways, make sure you check that episode out at some point for more details on this. But yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go into full detail on this episode. Just know that it's basically Monarch slash Dungeon-ish. Anyways, it also says, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy it. If you've completed a dungeon, copy that spell twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. And of course, the reminder text, a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. So just at a base level, again, this coming into play introduces the initiative mechanic into the game, which is really, really good for a certain decks. Again, being able to essentially generate some extra value out of a dungeon. And secondly, of course, if you actually complete a dungeon, oh my goodness, tripling spells is, well, something that is obviously incredibly powerful and can be very broken in many ways. But again, even if you haven't completed that dungeon, at a base level with this just being in play, your second spell that you cast each turn, not just on your turn, each turn is copied. And it doesn't matter what kind of a spell that is. So again, it can be an instant sorcery. Usually, you know, those are the ones that you see getting copied. But of course, it can also be any kind of a permanent spell. So you just automatically get a token copy of that if that's the case. Again, we typically really don't see just the ability to copy anything just being able to stay on the board, much less something be able to copy something twice, being able to get, you know, three of one thing. You cast one spell and you're getting triple the value, which is just absolutely absurd. Now again, I guess I should probably clarify again, I did say when you cast one spell, you do have to cast a spell prior to that one. So obviously, you know, if you've got a big spell that you want to copy, or again, triple if you've got, you know, that dungeon requirement filled, Cool. Cast a small spell first and then cast, you know, your bigger spell that you want to double or triple. So obviously this elf monk does cost a decent amount to get out. But again, it's introducing a mechanic that can definitely help you out throughout the game. And of course, on top of that, it's providing a lot of value when you're casting that second spell. Keep in mind, again, like I mentioned earlier, this counts your opponent's turns as well. So if you've got two instants, you know, that you're going to be casting on your opponent's turns, by casting them on the same turn, you are going to be able to get double or triple the value on one of them. Now, when it comes to comparable cards to this one, the first one that came to my mind is Swarm Intelligence, which is an enchantment for six in a blue. It says whenever you cast an insert sorcery spell, you may copy that spell. You may choose targets for the copy. When it comes to a permanent that copies spells, this is usually what I think of. And usually, again, when it comes to copying spells, typically that is reserved for instants and sorceries, not for permanent spells. That being said, can you imagine copying this if this is your second spell in the turn with your Tomb of Horrors adventure in play? Or again, tripling it if you've completed that dungeon, getting three of this essentially in place. So whenever you cast an insert or sorcery, you're getting so many copies of it. Now, obviously that is a good amount of mana to cast something before this and then this, but yeah, there, there are plenty of ways to do that. And uh, yeah, that is a massive payoff regardless. When it comes to actually copying permanent spells, we have seen a couple others that can do it like Volo Guide to Monsters, which says, whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature card you control or a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell. So obviously this is specific to just creatures. And again, it has a pretty hefty requirement for certain decks, you know, unless you've got a deck that's completely built around Volo, Eddie. But yeah, even just being able to copy certain creature spells is a very powerful thing. I mean, if you want to see Eddie's deck in action, make sure you check out that Close Quarters episode. I believe it's episode number six. So yeah, make sure you check that episode out. Regardless, we've also seen another commander that can copy spells with Jenga Taxi's Progress Tire. It says whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. So this one is more limited in that it's only copying artifacts, instants, or sorceries. But again, that's still a very powerful thing. And it's kind of the reverse of our brand new card where this one's only going to copy your first spell. 
because again it does limit this to only one trigger whereas you know this new card copies our second spell and again it's basically only limited to one trigger each turn as well now when it comes to a card that can actually copy any spell again like our brand new one we actually saw one of those in streets of new capenna with threefold signal it has when it enters the battlefield scry three and each spell you cast that's exactly three colors has replicate three so essentially, when you cast it, you copy for each time you pay its replicate. Cost me choose targets for the copies. A copy of a permanent spell becomes a token. This one obviously is much more limited. Though again, it can copy any kind of a spell. That spell has to have exactly three colors. So very specific. And again, you do have to actually pay for that copy by replicating it by paying three. So yeah, this brand new card is very unique. It again has a ton of potential in the right deck. Even just on the turn that this comes down, keep in mind, if this is the first spell that you cast in the turn, sure, I mean, follow that up with a soul ring that you just drew. Obviously, that would then be your second spell that you cast in the turn, and what's better than one soul ring, but two, and, and maybe three if you've already completed a dungeon, but yeah. Of course, keep in mind also in the reverse, you know, if this, you know, new card is already in play, utilizing low to the ground spells like, you know, a soul ring can be great as your first spell that you cast, so you can cast something much larger to double or triple up on it. Also keep in mind by cloning this either with an actual clone like clone, I'm just going to keep saying clone, or a clone spell like quasi duplicate. Oh my goodness, the potential that this thing has when you can do that. And yeah, there are definitely decks out there that are going to want to utilize all these kinds of cards. It's just pretty incredible. Because by having two copies of the adventure in play, well, actually, you know, by getting the second copy in play, you get to take the initiative again, which helps progress you through that dungeon even further. And also, you know, get you the initiative back again. If you haven't seen that episode on initiative, make sure you check it out at some point. But of course, on top of, you know, adventuring further through your dungeon, potentially completing it, now every time you cast your second spell in a turn, you're getting two copies of it. And actually, for those of you not familiar with clone, I probably should have said this first, you may have clone enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. And then Quasi Duplicate says, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, and it's got Jumpstart. So you can cast it again from your graveyard by discarding a card and paying its other cost. And keep in mind, this can be even more absurd, you know, if one of these is the second spell you cast in a turn, you are getting a copy of it to copy the adventure yet another time and things just get really ridiculous from there so yeah in kind of like a clone or you know a clone token kind of a deck this can really shine so when it comes to commanders that can utilize this in the 99 of their decks one of the first ones that came to my mind was brutoclad telcor engineer it's a 4-4 artificer that costs four blue and a red and says creature tokens you control have haste at the beginning of combat on your turn create a 2-1 blue mirror artifact creature token then you may choose a token you control if you do each other token you control becomes a copy of that token first up giving your creature tokens haste is just nice because yeah when you copy things with your adventurer those tokens are going to be able to attack right away again if they're creatures of course, on top of that, Brutoclad just absolutely loves when you make tokens of things because then you can make all your tokens into copies of that. And of course, in this deck, there are going to be quasi-duplicate type cards that can make, you know, creature token copies of creatures. So, of course, you can make a copy of your adventurer and then turn all of your tokens into adventurers. And then you just cast one tiny spell and then one bigger spell. And then you get an absurd amount of copies of that. Have fun. And also have fun when you utilize this card in an Adrix and Nev Twincasters deck. It's a 2-2 Merfolk Wizard with Ward 2, and if one or more tokens will be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. So again, this deck can utilize a lot of those quasi-duplicate type cards, and yeah, create a token copy of your adventure. Oh, but wait, it's two, two tokens thanks to this commander, so now you've got three of them in play, and when you cast your second spell, you either double or triple it up three times. Which, of course, will, you know, be doubled with Adrix and Nev Twincasters, yeah, this can get out of hand quite quickly. And actually, one deck that I do want to mention that is near and dear to my heart is my Gigantha Karuga deck. And if you haven't seen my episode on that one, make sure you check it out at some point. But yeah, this deck is all about essentially getting creatures out, making creature token copies of them, populating, and just having a blast with all those ETBs and effects. So yeah, depending on the price, I am definitely going to be considering the adventure as an addition to this deck. Next up, though, a dungeon commander like Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways might want to consider this card as well. Sephiroth is a 2-3 human wizard that says whenever one or more creature cards are put in your graveyard from anywhere, venture in the dungeon, this ability triggers only once each turn. And create undead whenever you complete a dungeon, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. 
So Sephiroth can definitely help you get through dungeons really quickly to meet that requirement for this new card. And also on top of that, it can also help get it out of your graveyard. So, you know, if you've got some kind of a loot spell, cool. Let's loot, get into our graveyard, get it out of our graveyard, and then we can just start tripling up our second spells. One final commander that I want to mention that is quite a disgusting commander with a lot of builds out there. Let's talk about Animar Soul of Elements. It's a 1-1 one, one elemental. It says whenever you cast a creature spell, put a plus one counter on Animar Soul of Elements, and creature spells you cast cost one less cast for each plus one counter on Animar. Animar decks can be very powerful creature decks with a lot of cost reduction. Again, the more creatures you get in the play, the bigger Animar gets, and the cheaper your creatures are to cast. So the Adventurer can easily be a one mana spell that you then follow up with something absolutely massive as your second spell to double that up for even more creatures. Overall though, I think this is a very exciting new card and it's not for every deck out there, but there are a lot of decks that can just truly make the most out of it. Again, if you've got ways to clone this or ways to copy it, this can just get out of hand in absolutely no time, especially once you've completed that dungeon. And of course, there are ways to take advantage of being able to make, you know, tokens out of any kind of a permanent by being able to, you know, make more tokens with maybe populating, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, I think this card has a lot of potential, and I think a lot of players out there are going to be really excited about it. And speaking of exciting, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting spoilers and quick takes coming up. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.